Lord. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, be seated. We want to dive into the word immediately. Uh, if you recall that our study in this 40 days of power has been as the Lord gave us on the book of Acts of the Apostles. And we have studied uh, some verses in chapter 1. I think yesterday we ended in verse 5. We read up to verse 5. So let me read again from verse 4 down to verse 8. Please open your Bibles and let's read together. One, two, go. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they, therefore, were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Please let's read loud and clear. Verse 8 together. One to go. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, I want you to note something very quickly, that this verse 8 we just read is the key verse of the whole book of Acts. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses. Ye shall receive power. Now, I want you to first of all observe the purpose of the power. Why are they going to receive power? So that they will be his witnesses. In other words, from the day he chose them, if you remember Mark 3, 13 to 15, the Bible says he went up to the mountain and called unto him those he wanted. And then he picked 12 out of them that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and that they will have power to heal sicknesses and to cast demons out. Now, from that day, he picked these you know, kingdom functionaries and began to train them. What he has in mind is, I want to raise... A group of men that when I will rise from the dead, they will become witnesses unto me. But they cannot be witnesses unto me except they are equipped with power. Now listen, the call to be a Christian is primarily the call to be a witness of Christ. But you cannot be a witness of Jesus without the power of God. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? It is not possible for you to witness. Now, you will notice that when he came on this last day of the 40 days that he was with them, the Bible said he spent 40 days with them speaking things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And then on this very last day, when they have gathered together, verse 6 now, because he mentioned it in verse, verse 5, he said to them, you know, in verse 4, he said, that they should not depart from Jerusalem. That's the appointed place. But that they should wait for the promise of the Father. What is the promise of the Father? The power. He said, for John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Now, what is the purpose of that Holy Ghost baptism? So that they will be empowered with the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you getting that? Now, if you check... The account of Luke, in the last chapter of Luke, Luke chapter 24, where he was speaking the same thing to the disciples. If we read it from verse, um, from verse 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, this is 
thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. I want you to see the similarity between this ending of Luke and the beginning of Acts. It was just the same, the same tone. Now look at verse 48. And ye are witnesses of these things. Ye are witnesses of these things. Verse 49. And behold, I sent the promise of my father upon you. Mark the word upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Go back to the book of Acts. Now, I don't know whether you notice that there are this same you know, ending. Because after this particular word in verse 49, the next thing that was reported was that he ascended to heaven. And that was exactly what happened after verse 8. The next thing was how he ascended. Are you getting that? The, he, he was picturing the same thing. That you don't depart from Jerusalem. Now, I want you to note what is in the mind of the master, the Lord himself. I have stayed with you people for three and a half years. I have taught you doctrines. I, I remember how I sat down with you at the beginning on the summer on the mountain and I gave a long teachings. I remember how I have taught you from place to place. We traveled all through. You have learned a lot of things from me, but that's not sufficient enough to be my witnesses. Now, I told you I'm going to die, and I died, and I rose from the dead. As I have risen from the dead, I have also appeared and showed myself alive to you. In other words, you people have encountered the living Jesus. So, you can tell somebody that he died and rose again. I saw him. He came to me. He appeared. And I saw him. In fact, I saw, he showed me the, 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 the hand where the nails was, you know, entered. And I saw the, the side. Are you getting that? You can testify to anybody what you saw when he appeared to you after resurrection. But the question is, will they believe you? You know, it's not about bearing witness is about whether your witnessing will be effective for the people that are listening to you to believe. When God was calling Moses after 40 years of staying under Jethro, in Exodus chapter 3, he spoke a lot and, you know, I was wondering what kind of person Moses was. Okay, he's old enough, 80 year old man. As we are talking, he'll be looking at you. He'll be listening to you. God said, I am the God of your father Abraham, the God of your father Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That is my name forever. I am going to send you to the people. You are going to liberate them from the hand of the Egyptians. He spoke a lot in Exodus chapter 3. When he finished talking, this 80 year old man in Exodus chapter 4 verse 1. You know what he said to God? The people will not believe me. Yes, you have appeared to me. I have seen you. I have heard you. I have removed my shoe for the place I am standing is holy. I have encountered you. I have heard your voice. But when I tell the people that I saw you, they will say it's a lie. And for wasting our time, we are going to punish you. You are not getting me. You see, human beings are very... It's not everybody that is lazy and waste their time. You can't come and begin to tell educated people or people that, that so, somebody who they know the day he was crucified. They also watched it on, uh, I mean, uh, Jerusalem television. Because, you know, that event was captured live. Uh, you are not getting me. When the matter was happening, the, 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 the Jerusalem television authority... JTA was capturing the whole thing live. And you come to tell such professors that the man rose from the dead. Where is the man? If you are the only one that saw him, it's not true. I can't believe that. At least my, my education cannot... Are you getting that? Such professors need power. That was what Jesus was telling these disciples. That you can't be my witnesses effectively. Though I have taught you, you have learned a lot from me. You have watched me. That is discipleship. Are you seeing something? Because many times we notice that several people, they are pursuing discipleship. They are in discipleship, but they, they don't get to the extent of getting his power. 
And the whole book of Acts was a record, please listen to me, a record of how they got this power and how they witnessed with this power and the men of their generation believed. So in chapter 2, when the power came and Peter began to preach, by the time Peter finished preaching, excuse me, what Peter said was just ordinary words. He just told them the history that they have known. How come the Bible said they were caught to the heart and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And it's not one person that is talking. 3,000 people, they believed and they told them we are going to baptize you. They said, well, we don't believe in baptism before, but for what is happening now, we are ready for baptism. And they were all baptized and they continued. The Bible says, and they continued in the apostles' doctrine. They didn't stop on the way. It was not like this half-hearted believing that some of us will go for evangelism and then after preaching, you will come back in one hour evangelism, 10 names and phone numbers. And when you begin to call those phone numbers to follow them up, you notice that some of them are fake numbers. Some of them will tell you, don't call this number again. It's not me that you met. How come our own evangelism is not effective? And their own we are effective. Power. The preaching was with power. And when that, as if that was not enough, in chapter 3, Peter was marching with John at the hour of prayer. This is a crippled man that has been at the Jerusalem gate. And maybe even when Jesus was there. Are you getting that? Peter looked at that man and said, look on us. We don't have silver, we don't have gold. But what we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of who? Jesus. This is somebody who died. But we know that he's alive. Rise up from... And then, as, the, as if the man is still wasting time, say, I spoke to you and you are looking at me. Come on! He used his hand and pulled him up. And when he began to walk, people gathered. Multitude gathered. They were shouting. We have never seen it like this before. What is happening here? Peter said, listen... It is faith in his name. Acts 3.16. This man that you people denied and chose Barabbas, a thief, a murderer, instead of him. God has raised him up from the dead. And by faith in his name, I have done this to prove to you people that the man is alive. If I tell you that he's alive, you will not believe me. That is why Jesus did not bother to show himself to the Sanhedrin. Are you following me? He didn't bother to show himself to any other group. It was to these people because they are the ones that will bear witnesses. Yet, that revelation of Jesus is not enough. Brother, I know that you have seen visions, you have seen revelations, angels have appeared to you. I mean, sense in heaven, Enoch, um, Abraham, all of them has come to you. That is not sufficient to be an effective witness. You shall receive power. Are you getting that? It was when they saw the, what was happening, what Peter did by the power on this cripple, they believed. And when they were arrested in chapter 4, and the people were like, by what power did you people do this? Peter, the Bible said, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked at them and said, excuse me, if today we are being questioned by what power this cripple man came back and become normal, we want to tell you people that it is by the power in the name Jesus Christ. The man that you people, you chief priests and high priests and low priests killed. But God raised him from the dead. And we are witnesses. How are we witnesses? We are witnesses that he is alive because by the power in his name, this young man, who is grateful for how many years you know him, is standing up today, whole and hearty, by the power in the name of the man you killed, who God has raised from the dead, to prove to you that he's alive, it was him that came and did this. Are you getting that at all? You know, the Bible said, when they considered what these young people are saying, they said, the truth is that we can't deny that a notable miracle has been done by their hand. Therefore, let's just, let's just you know, release them to go. And the Bible said, are you following my, I'm, I'm passing through the book of Acts to be able to show you how Acts chapter 1 verse 8 became a key to the acts of the apostles. And we always remain a key to the acts of genuine 
believers, witnesses of Christ, even in our generation. Are, are you there? Now, the Bible says when they have beaten them and released them, they came to their own company and they told them what happened. And they lifted up their voices and prayed. And after that prayer, in chapter 4, verse 31, the Bible says when they had prayed, Acts chapter 4, verse 31, the place where they were, were was shaken. And they were filled again with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word with boldness. Then in verse 32, the Bible said that with great power, of, of course they were together in one accord. Then verse 33, after that prayer, with great power. Somebody say great power. Great power. So what they received before was power. Now the power is in dimension. After that prayer, they received a greater power. With great power, the apostles gave witnesses. Please, can you open to Acts chapter 4, verse 30, 33? Because it has something to, to, to say about this same thing we are talking about. You shall receive power. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. Please, can we all read it loud and clear together? One, two, go. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Hey, I don't know whether you are seeing something here. With great preaching, is it with great preaching? Are you getting that? It's not with great words. Paul said to the Corinthians when he was writing to them, he said, my speech and my preaching, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, my speech and my preaching that I preached among you, was not with the enticing words of men. Eh? But with what? The demonstration of the spirit and power. Why did I do that? Verse 5. So that your faith will not lie on empty words of men. But on the power of God. Listen carefully. There is a tool. What I call it is kingdom currency for kingdom business. And if you want to know the topic of today's talk. It is kingdom currency for kingdom business. What is that kingdom currency? When you don't have it, you are poor. As far as the kingdom of God is concerned. You may be rich in knowledge. You may be rich in revelation. You may be rich in so many things. But when you lack, just like somebody who has zero naira. You know that person is miserable. He's poor. He can't eat. He can't brush his teeth. Because before you can brush your teeth, you need to buy toothbrush and buy toothpaste. Are you getting that? He can't dress well. He doesn't have money. So he will not be able to live. And when people have big money, we say these people are okay. In the kingdom of God, we have a currency. What is our currency? Power. That's our currency. When you are lacking in power, you are lacking in everything. So don't accept Christianity with power. Tell yourself, I will not accept Christianity without power. Let me tell your neighbor online, on site, tell your neighbor, don't accept Christianity without power. Refuse to be without power. Paul said to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, 6, he said that the, the, the gospel that I preached to you, it didn't come to you people in word only. It didn't come to you in word only. It came to you in, in power. It came to you in the Holy Ghost. And it came to you in much assurance. Can you imagine that? He knew that if he is going to be an effective witness, he is not going to preach only. He has to demonstrate. Demonstrate. Listen, demonstration of power is intentional. When you are going to preach to an unbeliever, when you are going to preach to believers or any, anywhere, you have to have it in mind that I am in here to demonstrate power. And so, when I see a case, like, you know, last weekend where I was in Lagos for MLDT, and when we are done, and we needed to pray for some people that are demon-possessed and all of that. Now, when I was handling a case, my own case, because we have a, a set of you know, ministers that are handling different cases. So, as I was handling my own case, I noticed that there is another case that was proving tough. I like tough cases of deliverance. So, the moment 
I am done. I went to buy the case. Are you getting me? Yes. You know, the day the Holy Ghost spoke to me about this matter, he said that the, the dimension of power that you carry and command is what gives you rating in the witnessing of Jesus. Are you getting that? So when I, I saw the, the demon making noise and manifesting, I said, this is a case. I love this case. I always like such cases. You know, some, so, so many believers are running away from opportunity to manifest power. <laughs> you know, Jesus was speaking to the disciples still on this matter after the resur resurrection. But how Mark captured it. In Mark chapter 16 from verse 15, he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. He now said in verse 17, And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they shall, what? Cast out devils. Listen, you don't cast devils out by words, by speaking. If it is by speaking, seven sons of Sceva would have done that excellently. Am I correct? They spoke to the demon. The demon said, excuse me, you don't have power. You call Jesus, he has power. You call Paul, he has power. But you, you don't have power. And he has to deal with them. In my name, you will cast out devils. In my name, you will speak with new tongues. If you lay your hands on the sick without lab tests, without medical report, all those kind of names, big names in the hospital, the sick shall be recovered. Jesus himself, listen carefully, before he ever started ministry, having lived a very perfect, wonderful, you know, righteous life for 30 years, such that God, at the point of baptism, having not done any ministerial work, testified and said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. You know what God is saying? For these 30 years you have lived, I have checked the way you have, you know, lived. Righteousness, holiness, your thought life, your speaking, everything, I am well pleased. So you can imagine the kind of life Jesus was living for that 30 years. But even he himself knew that I dare not start preaching until the power come. So even after the baptism, the Bible says he was driven by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness in Luke chapter 4. After he has been tempted by the devil, in verse 14, he returned in the power of the Spirit and his fame went everywhere. And then he entered the temple as his custom was in his own I mean, town. To read in verse 16, Luke 4, 16. And when he picked up the book of Isaiah, he opened it. He found a place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord God is where upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me also to preach deliverance to the captives, the opening of the eyes to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Bible says when he has finished reading it, he sat down. He now spoke to them and said, Today, before your very eyes, this scripture is fulfilled. Why am I talking to you like that? Because as I'm talking to you now, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. I can feel it. I can sense it. Now I am ready for the ministry. I am ready to bear witness to my, about, about my father to this generation. I'm ready to show people that my father sent me. Are you getting me at all? I want to repeat that in this kingdom where we are, the kingdom of God, the currency is what? And is in quantity. The same way you have, you know, there are some of us here, all that is in your account is 1,000 naira. There's another person that has one, one million naira. And then 10 million and all, physically. That's physical currency. Are you getting me? But when you come to power, there is small power. There is great power. At least you have seen great power. Acts 4 at 3 with great power. So sometimes when you pray for the sick and the sick is not 
did not get healed. It's not as if you will lack power. You have power, but your power is small. It's not great enough. Now, before I move on, let me tell us that every currency has a way of entering into one another. There's always an exchange. Are you getting me? If you have dollar, can you exchange it to Naira? Yes. There's a market where you can exchange Ghana CDs to Ni Nigerian Naira. Am I correct? Yes. yes. Now, if power is kingdom currency, will you admit that there is also an exchange rate with Naira and dollar? From power to Naira and dollar. That is why you see men and women with power. They don't lack. Are you getting me? Oh, you are not getting me. Ask, study and tell me how Jesus lacked. How can he raise a dead person that you have spent how much, I, I mean, in the hospital and you will not come to appreciate him? Are you, a, you must know the kind of wicked heart you have. You are not getting what I'm talking about. You see, many ministers, and even for some of us who are struggling, you say, I am not a pulpit minister. I'm in business. Go and find out what happened in Luke chapter 5 at the, at the Sea of Gennesaret. When Jesus appeared there, with one word, he spoke and said, launch out into the deep. And Peter said, oh God, I have been fishing for years. This is afternoon. There is no, no theory that ever makes fish available in the afternoon. And this deep you are talking about, I have gone there more than seven times over the night looking for fish. But nevertheless, I can see how the sick are getting healed as you are ministering. I can see power moving. Maybe there is something that will happen in this business. And you see the same power entering into business arena and producing such amount of fish that if you sell it, if you carry the fishes to the market, that is why if you are thinking that power is only for the pulpit, you are making mistake. And that's how many believers have been suffering. You carry power to everywhere you are. And that's where you are, his witnesses. If they sent you to primary school, excuse me, you shall be my witnesses. Where? In that yard where you are. You shall raise. That is the problem we have. We are teaching in secondary school. And a, 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 a young man begins to have convulsion. And they say, man of God, come and pray for this girl that is having convulsion. And you start dodging. You start dodging. You are saying, well, uh, something is telling you, don't go near. All kinds of fear that we, we are very far behind from the life expected of, of us from the master. Eh? And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Acts of the Apostle chapter 6 verse 8. This is a man that they just tried to confine him in the kitchen in the few verses above. They said, let us get people that will be in the kitchen to be cooking food and serving food. And he was one of them. But when they put him in the kitchen, the man said, I'm a man of power. You can't limit me to ushering work. You can't limit me to you know, cooking and serving food. He went out and being full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. That's not all. What about Philip? One of them. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 from verse 5, the Bible says, Philip single-handedly went down to Samaria. And after he preached Christ to the people, the people hearing and seeing the miracles, hearing and seeing, hearing and seeing, excuse me, he preached Christ. Who is Christ? Christ came to, to, to the world, is God. He died, and then God raised him from the dead. And I want to prove to you that God has raised him from dead. Samaria, listen, is there anyone that is sick, blind, anyone that is, you know, having problem with hearing? Let him come out so that the living Christ that I have seen, that I carry his power here, we heal the sick. If he heal the sick, will you people believe? You can't witness for him without power. It's not possible. You can't. It's not possible. Paul was writing to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 19. He said, don't think I'm not going to come to you. I'm going to come to you. And I will now know. Eh? <laughs> you know, it, it was like a contest. I want to know those of them that are making mouth among you. I want to know not their, their speech, but their... No, we must read that verse. Please open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 19 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 19 and verse 20. Are you there? 1 Corinthians 4, 19. He said... 
Okay, let's start from verse 18 so that you can get the context properly. Now, some are puffed off as though I will not come to you. He said, but I will come. I will come. And I will not even come, you know, I will come shortly. Eh? If the Lord will. And when I come, there's something I want to know. I will focus to know something. What is that? Not the speech of those of you who are puffed off. But what? Your power. Everybody read verse 20 together. One, two, go. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in what? In read it again. One, two, go. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Listen. Your own word may be speaking in tongues. Ba, 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 ba. And that's all. After speaking in tongues, where is the power? Speaking in tongues, good, powerful. But see, many believers has ended there. You see somebody saying, eh, this thing that they are speaking, I want to speak my own. Please pray for me so that I will speak. The moment he is beginning to speak in tongues, he will now touch the other people and say, eh, I'm like you now. At least when other people are speaking, make I be speaking my own. Excuse me. That is not Christianity. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. Now, I want to look at something. Jesus was trying to point out to the disciples because they were getting distracted. He was saying to them, please listen, because this is the problem of many of us. Ah, he was saying to them that John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Now, but what is it that was in their mind? Do you know that out of the abundance of their heart, the mouth speak it? Do you know the question they were asking? He said, Lord, when are you going to restore the physical kingdom to Israel? Israel has been under the king kingdom of Rome for years. Even the years you lived and ministered among the people. Now, we believe that having died and risen from the dead, that same power that made you to come back to life, eh, is able to restore the kingdom back to Israel. Where is their mind now? Their mind is on this earthly thing. Where is their heart? Their heart is distracted by physical kingdom, physical things, cars, houses. I mean, things that are perishing. They are not, look at their mind. The Bible said they ask him. It's not one person that asks the question. They ask him. In other words, when he, he left, they have been thinking about it. They have been discussing it. It's like this is time. Before this man will, will leave us again, let's find out from him whether this is the time. And you know what they have in mind? If he restored the kingdom to Israel, who is going to be the president? You don't know that when people struggle and recover independence, that the chief struggler normally becomes the president. Am I correct? That's how Nandi Azikiwe became the first president of Nigeria. That's how was this a South African man? Nelson Mandela. These are chief strugglers. So they are already hoping that now you have died and risen from the dead. This is powerful. You came back. We are still imagining it. Now it is time for you to become the president of Israel. To use this same power to deal with Romans. You know they crucified you, but you came back to life. See, it is time for you to be the president and me, Peter, I know I'm going to be the chief of staff. I mean, are you getting it now? They're already trying to think worldly, use the, the, the worldly mindedness. Oh, no wonder the Bible said, set your mind on things where? Above. Not on things on the earth. That was the distraction. Listen, the devil, the devil, I am repeating it. And the flesh will do everything possible to distract you from power. It can tell you that Bible study is enough. So sometimes you see believers that are deep in Bible knowledge. When they teach you Bible, Bible like this, you say, Rema. You ask the same Bible teacher, come and cast demon out. He say uh, that deliverance has been finished at the cross. But this is a madman. This madman needs to be delivered. There is a, a demon in him. That need to be cast out. Excuse me, brother. Command the spirit to go. Stop telling me that deliverance has finished at the cross. Yes, deliverance has finished at the cross. We believe that. But we are the executors of the cross. What happened in the cross? Are you getting that? Because, listen, you know, when Nigerian government passes a law and say all kidnappers, all armed robbers, they should be 
uh, arrested, they should be sent to prison. The thing is in the constitution. The thing is in the law. But that, does that stop armed robbers from operating? Does that stop kidnappers from operating? Even when they hear that their colleague has been arrested, will they stop? These are how stubborn demons are. They know that they have been disarmed. You know, at Lagos last weekend, the, the most you know, outstanding deliverance case, when I came around, I observed that he was you know, trying to collect powers from several thousands of demons around. The Holy Spirit said to me, walk around him seven times and cut off those connections. I walk around him seven times and cut them, cut them off. Then I came to him. I said, Jesus, because he was threatening, he was all kinds of things, but I said, you have been defeated, disarmed, and destroyed. One day I will preach it as a topic. Defeated, disarmed, and what? Destroyed. Colossians 2 verse 15. He has disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public show of you, triumphing over you by the cross. He made The moment I said, I said, no, 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 I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I said, you will hear it tired now. You don't want to hear what has happened to you, which I have come here to execute. You are stubborn. At a time, he told me that he entered this boy when he was a baby. When he was a baby, he entered. How do I expect him to leave this? That this boy is mine. But thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit. Such people that are in bondage, not because they want to be in bondage. Can you see how people enter under the oppression of Satan? Can you imagine this, brothers and sisters, that this boy, as a baby, I, I learned that the, the mother got him out of wedlock. 14-year-old girl. And then, because of that, the hatred of the family was so much on him. Sometimes they would keep him outside, lock the door, and he would be outside in cold, mosquito and everything. He suffered. That's where these demons, and there are too many of them. But thank God for the power. You know, Jesus healed a woman that was bent for 18 years in the synagogue. He couldn't lift up himself. He couldn't lift up himself. And the Bible said, he touched and said, daughter, you are made whole. And then the synagogue religious political man came up and said, don't come to the synagogue to be healed on the Sabbath. Jesus looked at him and said, look, you are a wicked man. This is a daughter of Abraham. Mind you, this is not a daughter of Ishmael. This is not a daughter of, I mean, um, this is a daughter of Abraham. Daughter of Abraham. And Satan entered Abraham's house, picked his daughter, and bound him for 18 years. And you don't expect me to deliver him on a Sabbath day. The Bible says when he spoke that, all the enemies were ashamed. I want you to pick up a challenge today that I will not be powerless. Because you can never, listen carefully, the highest call we are called as believers is the call to be a witness. Lift up your right hand and say after me, the highest call God has called me is to be a witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In this same chapter 1, when they wanted to replace Judas with Matthias, you know, Peter spoke and said, that we want to replace Judas with Matthias. That you people know that there are people that have followed us from the time, look at it, from the time that Jesus, Jesus, uh, baptism of John, look at it from verse 21, uh, Acts chapter 1, 21. Wherefore of these men which have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken from us, must one be ordained to be what? To be what? See, when somebody call you a man of God, tell him, please, call me a witness. You are not, you are not getting me. You are not getting me. You shall receive power. You are talking about the kingdom of this world, but that's not why I came. That's not what, why I picked you. You shall, I picked you because I want you to be a witness unto me. Look at what Saul said in Acts 26. Look at Acts 26. Because he was explaining to King Agrippa how he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, verse 15, Acts 26 verse 15. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus 
whom thou persecutest. Verse 16. And but rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. To make thee, number one, a what? A minister. And then number two, a what? A witness. Both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto you. Delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. What am I sending you to do? Number one, to open their eyes. Number two, to turn them from darkness to light. Number three, to turn them from the power of Satan unto God so that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. To make you, I appeared to you for this purpose. What is my purpose of appearing to you? To make you two things, a minister and a witness. Listen, there are many ministers that are not witnesses. I repeat, it is easier to be a minister. Who are you? I am an ushering minister. I am a pulpit minister. Minister so and so, who is a singer? Are you getting what I'm talking about? And then preachers are also ministers. The word minister are people that are serving God in one capacity or the other in the house of God. The media ministers are there trying to make what we are seeing visible, uh, visible to people outside here. Many of us here, we are ministers. But Paul said, when the Lord appeared to me, he told me that I am appearing to you for this purpose, to make you two things. Not just a minister, but also what? A witness. We have been ministers. Listen, you can be a minister without power. That's very comfortable. You don't even need much power to be a minister of the world. You can teach and expose the Bible and people will get revelation and shout, wow, Rema, that's a minister. You can sing as a minister and people will be blessed. You can even as an ushering minister, usher people very well, clean the environment, arrange things well. Without power, you can do all of those things. But for you to be a witness, Oga, listen, first of all, you need to see him alive. But that's not all. That one is for you, so that you can be sure of what you are saying. When you tell them that he rose from the dead, you say, how do you know? First, I saw him. He appeared to me alive with many infallible proofs. But secondly, are you there? I have something to show you now that he is alive. Are you sick? Or is there anybody sick in this house? So that I will pray for that person in the name of Jesus and the person will be healed. When I finish preaching the gospel in the bus or anywhere at all or personally, I always want to demonstrate this power. I remember meeting a young man some years ago who, after preaching to him, I asked him, for me to prove to you that this Jesus is alive, this death and resurrection is, is, is are you sick? I'm looking for something to demonstrate. Paul said, demonstration. Demonstration is an intentional thing. It's a deliberate thing. You, you are not, you, you want to show. It's a practical. You want, is there anybody here that is sick? Come out here. You know, sometimes we are trying to avoid demonstration. Because something is telling you, what if it did not work? It means you are not sure. That's why it needs to appear to you alive first with many infallible proofs so that you can be sure that the man is alive and is with me. Are you getting me? That's why the power will, will, will be received by you when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Upon you. Listen, I'm coming to that. But you see, this young man, he told me that he is having ulcer. And this ulcer is a deadly one so chronic that for several years eh several i can't remember but so many years back he has been suffering from this ulcer he said to me that the parents are spending double i'm telling you his exact words they are spending double on him training him in school than all the siblings double that was what he told me he showed me once more also, ameliorating drug, not healing drug. He said that one does not heal, 
But when you take it, if it is too much, it will calm it down. As of then, the price was very high. When I ministered health, what I ministered to him was not even healing. I hope you know the difference between healing and health. When I ministered health, eh, from the stripes of the one that died and rose again, this young man became free. Excellently free. He was shocked to his bone. He told me that he can play ball before. And be, he tried to play ball and it was normal. That is what we are talking about, demonstration. Demonstration. If Christ is our life, then the sick here will be healed. If Christ is our life, anyone who is being harassed by demon here will be healed. If Christ is our life, are you getting me? We are called to be witnesses. And that is why I want you to reject life without power. The beauty of Christianity is power. Igbo people, some of the Igbo people said, Do you remember that adage? That is what makes a man, a male figure, beautiful is money. That is for the natural man. Now, what do you think that is the beauty of a man of God, a child of God? What is our beauty? Power. If you lack power, you will be harassed by demons, you will compromise your faith, you will be begging food in order to eat. Because if you have power, there is a currency exchange that you can use power to exchange with Naira and Dollar. Oh, are you getting me at all? We don't sell power. One man called Simon the sorcerer saw where power was being ministered by laying of, of, of hands. You know what he did? He said, give me money. Him. Give me power. He offered money. Peter said, we don't exchange. This is not the, the correct exchange rate. Are, are you getting that? This is not a dollar and naira exchange rate now is how much? You know? The current one. Can you imagine Simon bringing a low... Oh my God. He said, no, 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 no. You have to go and perish with this, your money. Before I got power, I spent three and a half years with the man. And I waited after resurrection. I saw him. And then on the Pentecost day, the power came. And I began to grow in the power until the power become great, such that my shadow is now healing the sick and casting out demons. And you come to take money. Have you done follow up one? <laughs> Can you imagine? He has not even repented well. You need power. Let me tell your neighbor, you need power. Tell yourself, I need power. I will pay price to be powerful. He said, but you shall receive power. Do you know that from the moment that they released Paul and Barnabas to mission in Acts chapter 13, I mean, the, the, one of the very spectacular cases that, you see, the book of Acts was a record of power. That's why I said Acts 1 verse 8 is the key verse. Wherever there is power event, the man will capture it. They, they were trying to preach to a deputy governor. And there was this Elemas, the sorcerer. So when you are on the journey, you will be meeting sorcerers. You'll be meeting warlocks, with witches. Some of them will come to your crusade. Are you getting that? That's why you need to be powerful. So then we, we hear that you are coming and arm themselves, be in a gang and they will come around and as you are preaching they will be trying to release their fake you know, inferior power. Yes. This man was distracting the deputy governor and Paul looked at him and said, you you will be blind for a while. The Bible said if, what shocked me from that scripture he said, you will not be blind forever. I know if it's you it's forever. <laughs> but Paul, is, Paul was merciful. He said, you'll be blind for what? A while. Now, when that happened, the man that he was trying to... The Bible said, when the man saw what happened, he believed. When the man saw how Paul made the native doctor blind, he believed. Who will not believe? I mean, a human being want to see something. Moses said to God, they will not believe me. All this, your introduction and all of that, thank you for a long talk. They will not believe me. I will witness so. I will tell them that you, you appear to me. But how will they believe me? I'll be telling them, God of Abraham, God of Isaac. They will even stone me. And God said, now, I will give you three signs. Drop your rod. He dropped his rod. So he, 
impacted power on the road. He said, put your hand on your side. He put, put it again. He now said, if they don't believe the first one, they will believe the second one. If they don't believe the second one, then go to River Nile, carry water, pour it on the ground, it will turn to blood. They must believe. When he said that, Moses said, know that the matter of power has settled. He now started talking about, I'm not eloquent and all of that. I, are you getting what I'm saying? So, the, this matter is very, very serious. We are in 40 days of power. This is the third day. And I want you to get angry at the level of powerlessness you have been operating in. And refuse to continue in that manner. But you shall receive power. Say, I shall receive power. I shall receive power. Now, I want to you know, say one or two things from that verse, then I will conclude. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Sorry. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Please listen. Please listen. I want you to note the word upon. The Holy Spirit indwells every believer. But when it comes to power, he comes upon. Are you getting me? There's the, there's the positioning of the Spirit on your life for power to come up. If you remember what happened when the children of Israel were crossing the Red Sea, the Bible said when they entered when, when the, the, the army of Pharaoh were rushing towards them, you know what happened? The pillar of fire and the cloud that was in their front changed position and went to stay at their back. That's a, a, a positioning. God will have to change position. The spirit is inside. But when it comes to manifestation of power, he, he does what? He comes upon you. Upon you. Take everywhere. Say, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. It's in me, but it's also upon me. And that's why most times when you are operating, sometimes it comes with feeling. Sometimes when you hear we, men of God, say, there is somebody here. Eh? You are having headache or you are having this. Listen, we are not saying those things arbitrarily. There is something happening upon us. It's either the spirit of God has come upon, upon, upon me with fire. You will feel fire. You feel literal fire. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, tongue of fire was sitting upon their head. Upon. Read your Bible. Acts 2.3. The tongues of fire was what? Sitting down on, up, on, upon, on their head. Sitting down. It sat upon their Sitting that's relax. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. And that is why you must have to ask yourself, how do I get into this spirit of God being upon me? Because the moment it comes upon you, then anything you say happens. When it's not upon you, eh, you will not see anything. Are you, are you getting me at all? That is why when I want the spirit to convince somebody as I'm preaching, have you forgotten that in Acts 10 verse 44, the Bible says, while Peter was still preaching, the Holy Ghost fell upon the people. The Holy Ghost disrupted the preaching. You know, it, ha it still happened now. Somebody will be preaching, teaching. You see somebody will scream. He will shout. What is happening to this person? A demon may be living. I mean, something is happening by power. Now, the, 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 the secret of walking in the power as a witness is prayer. I want to say it and stop there. And when they had prayed, Acts 4 verse 31, the place where they were, we are shaking. Now, you need to know that that kind of prayer is not a gentleman prayer. A prayer that will literally shake a building. The building did not shake by anointing. The building shake by the vibration. Are you getting me? That synchronize with the vibration of the building. As they are praying. Their prayer movement. Their prayer noise. Synchronize with the vibration of the walls. 
And so you, you can see that that is a very serious, fervent prayer. James 5 verse 16. Confess your fault to one another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Not every kind of prayer. Yes, you are a righteous man. We salute you for your righteousness. Yes, you are prayerful. But what kind of prayer? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Does what? Abelet much. And when they had prayed, Acts 4 that one, the place where they were, where, where, was shaking. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, how you know that the Spirit is upon you is that He has filled you. And let me say, do you know also that it is the same power of the Holy Spirit in you that enables you to overcome the flesh. That's why Romans chapter 8, verse 12 and 13 said, Beloved, you are debtors, but not to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will surely die. But if by the power of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. So, the same power of the Holy Spirit that you are going to employ and apply in your life to be able to put to death the deeds of the flesh and live a correct life because without correct life you can't preach a correct gospel the power will enable you to live correctly the power will also come upon you to minister to others so the power is working both in you and through you that is why the currency the kingdom currency for kingdom business how many of you want to do the kingdom business Ah, when you say you have been called into full time, you should be able to know exactly what you are in for. Power. Are you getting what I'm saying? Power. When he went to send the disciples out, even while they were with him, in Luke chapter 10, chapter 9, get it on the screen. The Bible said, he called the 12 to him and gave them power and authority over all demons. And then he sent them out to go and preach and to cure diseases. He gave them power. Because he knew that without power they cannot preach well. They cannot succeed. They will meet sorcerers. They will be challenged. You don't need to start running. You don't need to close your mouth. The agents of darkness, you don't become a native doctor without power. Are you getting me? You don't become an agent without power. For you to be, be called a servant of Satan because they are bearing witness that Satan is alive. Oh, you are not getting me. These people are better witnesses of Satan than we are for Christ. You say you are a witness of Christ. Where is the power? Then a native doctor that is by your side is a witness of Satan. You see politicians traveling, parking their car and removing their sandal and obeying everything, drinking all manner of things. Is a young boy that is, is younger than you. How come? How come he become a better witness that Satan is existing because when the politician is going to his place, the politician knows that this young man is not working with God's power. Am I correct? He knows that he's working with Satan's power, but he has decided to abandon church because there's no power in church. When he got money, he will go and give, donate money. I say, uh, man of God, I want to support the work of God with some of uh, uh, one, one million naira. Uh, let the work of God be going. But when he finishes, he knows that this man of God has no power. He will go to Babalao and receive a better witness. When he is coming out, he says, yes, I know that Satan is alive. That was how one young man, when I was a lecturer, head of department, I met a young man, I want to preach to him. I asked him, give your life to Christ. One of my students, he said He's, he can never give his life to Christ. I said, why? He said he asked God something God did not do. He went to Satan. He went to Satan and asked Satan the same thing and Satan did it. He must have gone to one native doctor or as a wife. Are you getting what I'm saying? And they know how to summon spirits. They know how to do incantation. We don't know how to pray. They keep times. They, 12 o'clock, they are woken up. Many of you are sleeping and snoring. Making sound sleep. And these people are manipulating, releasing things, collecting power, reinforcing their altars. And you are sleeping and snoring. Listen. If you will walk in the power and be effective, remember, you businessman, this power is needed in your business. Remember, you civil servant, go and ask Daniel what happened between him and the 
fellow service civil servants in the place of work. When I was in, in UNN as head of department, and you know, all through that period, there are sorcerers in that department. I mean, agents of darkness. I know them and they know me. They, every people confirm. In fact, there was one brother that has prophetic gift. The day he entered our department, he came to visit me. He asked me, who is this man? I said, he's a professor here. He said, that man is an agent of Satan. And these are the people that they do meeting almost every day for me. They, ha they have tried all spiritual means. They failed. So they are doing, trying to use physical petition and all of that. They still failed. You need power. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? You, see, this is how Christians, because if you don't have, they will give you a chair. Eh? I mean, they will poison you and may, may you not die a shameful death. May agents of darkness not manipulate accidents, sickness, and all sorts of things around you. And that is how you will end shamefully. May that not be your portion. Rise in power. You shall receive power. The power is available. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is in you. But you need to come upon you. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But be ready to be his witness. Be ready to. One brother locked himself up in the room for three, three days. He's saying, God, power, power. He said, at the end of three days, God asked him, power for what? You are not ready to go for evangelism and you're asking for power. Where do you demonstrate the power? Look at it. These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. Demon is, is where? In your room. Is it not when you go out, you will meet people that carry demon? Is it? Are people that are carrying demon in the fellowship? You shall cast out demon where? In the place of evangelism. You shall heal the sick. That's where to demonstrate it. Is somebody getting me? We have slept too, too much. We have worked powerlessly too much. And let me say this. If we don't take heed of what God is saying now about this passion for power, if it is money I'm talking about now, many of us will, be, will be, pay attention. Money. But I'm talking about something that is greater than money. The disciples were thinking about the kingdom of this world. How they are going to become big politicians. And they were excited and they were asking Jesus, is it this time you are going to do it? And Jesus said, I have a higher kingdom. I have what? A higher kingdom. That operates on a higher currency. You shall receive power. Rise on your feet and say, I must receive power today. And begin to pray. Because the Bible says when they had prayed, the place where they were, were shaking. No, no, this morning is very serious. You can't be casual. You can't be casual. You cannot. Enough of being casual. It's time to walk in power. I refuse to be a powerless Christian. I 